The Dust Bowl was one of the most devastating climate extremes of the 20th century and so it is important to understand the conditions that might have led up to this particular event. Many of the temperature records over the US that still hold until today were set in the 1930s. So the research question that we wanted to answer was understanding the large-scale climatic conditions that might have contributed to this extreme heat in the 1930s in order also to help potentially predicting those kind of conditions if things line up again in a similar way. This figure just shows how in the 1930s on average we had a strong warm anomaly during summer over North America yeah. and if we look at the time series of these anomalies we see how here in the 1930s in particular 34 and 36 stand out as the hottest years, hotter even as the most recent years 2011, 2012 when we also have seen strong heat waves in this area. 1934 and 1936 um, were characterized by particularly hot summer temperatures and a large number of hot days during summer occurring. What, what we have found is that there seems to be a strong relation between spring precipitation and summer heat in this area of the central US, of central North America. For example, what we see here is that the hottest years, 1934 and 1936, the hottest years in terms of their summer temperatures, in terms of the hot days in summer, um, were the years that also have seen the driest spring conditions on record in this area. So, so we found that the large-scale wind systems showed anomalies during the 1930s that um, hampered the transport of moist air from the Gulf of Mexico into the North American continent. And we then followed on and also found that this kind of large-scale wind anomalies occur when the northeast Pacific Ocean shows warmer than normal ocean surface temperatures and also when the North Atlantic Ocean is warmer than normal. And this kind of anomalies look very similar for 1934 and 1936 where we also see this warm anomalies here in the Atlantic and here in the Pacific, in the Northeast Pacific Ocean. And if we compare to the most recent heat events in 2011 and 2012, we see that in the Atlantic we also see this anomalously warm surface waters, similar to what we have seen in the 1930s, but the pattern over here in the Pacific Ocean looks actually almost opposite to what we have seen in the 1930s. So th th there are, there's similarity in the Atlantic basin, but Th this, um, the anomalies in the Pacific are totally different to what we've seen in the 1930s. We then tried to understand the role of the different ocean basins in terms of um, driving or contributing to the dry and hot conditions over the continent. And we found that heat or, or, or warm surface waters in any of the two ocean regions contributes to dry springs and then followed by hot summers over North America. So here on the left, for example, we see the average of, um, in this case, spring precipitation if this area in the Northeast Pacific is warmer than normal. And we see how when the Pacific is warmer than normal in spring, we see also how the central US are drier than normal in spring. And then if we look into summer, warmer than normal in summer. We see a similar picture here in the middle row for when the Atlantic is warmer than normal. Also when the Atlantic is warmer than normal we see how the springs show, see a, a precipitation deficit over almost the same area over the central US and then also in summer it is warmer than normal in the same area where we saw the dry anomalies in spring. And here on the right side we see the combination of both effects. This basically shows the average conditions when both the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans are warmer than normal and we see how the precipitation deficits are even stronger in spring and also the following summers are even hotter compared to when only one of the ocean regions is warmer than normal. And this combination is basically um, what made 
the 1930s summers so extraordinarily hot. So this link between springtime conditions and hot summers may be useful for seasonal forecasts, for example, because it might help us to already um, see hot summers coming when we see the spring anomalies lining up in this way. Of course, there's not a 100% certainty that those conditions always lead to hot summers. For example, we have seen those conditions with warm anomalies in both oceans leading up to dry springs, but then it may happen that a strong precipitation event in early summer, for example when a tropical cyclone makes landfall, delivers so much moisture that this feedback between dry soils and hot summers is broken and so the summers didn't get particularly hot. This constellation of warm Pacific and warm Atlantic surface waters happens very rarely and we haven't seen it that strong occurring since the 1930s. Since then, at least the global average temperatures have warmed significantly and so if this constellation of, of conditions might reoccur nowadays in a world that is warm on average, it might lead to even higher temperatures than we had in the 1930s and so the, the records that now hold for about 80 years might break if those conditions reoccurred in a warmer world.